Hey guys, it's Paul. We've got a question to answer from the Zoho Facebook group. Effectively, how to connect Calendly.com with Zoho CRM. So obviously, Calendly is a like a booking system where you can you can schedule appointments, phone calls, meetings, and you can basically say, you know, I have you know this is a fifteen minute call meeting event. Uh, you want someone to book a slot and then create an event within your Zoho social, within your Zoho CRM, right? So it was asked by Nicole, who is saying, I use Calendly for booking appointments. Does Zoho have a pre-built service for appointments? So really the question is, is there an add-on for Zoho CRM that you can do where you get rid of Calendly? And I'm going to research that and try and find a quicker, easier way. If there's a portal that does the same thing, then we'll look at that. But... Because you always already use Calendly, we're going to answer how to connect the two. So, in in the forum group, um, Moitza, Moitza, I had to Google how to say your name, but I hope I hope I've got it close. Moitza said, "Check out this old Calendly extension, right?" So I looked at it and I tried to install it, and it didn't work. It didn't do what I needed it to do, and. It would add, edit, and delete events, but it doesn't tag a contact to your CRM. So maybe they're going to upgrade it soon, uh, and I'll recheck it out. But what you really want is the contact to come through, create a contact, and then tag an event to that contact. So you could do it via Zapier. So if you go to Calendly, the integrations in Calendly, one of them is Zapier, Zapier, but to connect Calendly to, to Zapier and then Zapier, I don't know why, Americans I guess call it Zapier. But to connect Calendly to uh, Zapier and then fire it to Zoho CRM, you would need a premium account with Zapier. Zapier. Um, so it would cost you $20 a month to do it that way. The way I'm doing it, the way I'm going to recommend is use it through Zoho Flow. So if you're if you're a Zoho One customer, you will get Zoho Flow with your um, enterprise level Zoho CRM. So there'd be question marks whether I don't know the pricing exactly on Zoho to do this via Zoho Flow. It's going to be about twenty dollars, just like the Zapier twenty dollars. But if you're a Zoho One customer, if you're in my Zoho One training, you get this included in your Zoho One package. So we're gonna do it all through Zoho One, we're gonna use it Zoho Flow. So when you go to your Zoho One account, access your apps, you will go Flow, and this way you set it up, right? So I've got a Calendly Flow, I'm gonna show it working, and then I'll show you each step um, to create it via each step, right? So when I go to the builder, what's gonna happen is when you connect to Calendly, oh, and you have to have a paid Calendly account as well. It won't work on the free version of Calendly. They're obviously not letting you integrate um, on the free version, so it's obviously a paid upgrade. So I had to pay ten dollars to upgrade to, to month to month on Calendly. So firstly, I collect, I, I, um, I get the event from Calendly. I pull that information. Don't worry, I'm going to go through it all step by step in a minute. I then create or update a contact based on that event. Then I fetch that contact and then I create the event, right? So it looks something like this. If I put in, if I go and schedule a call, where we go? 145 on Saturday the 12th, right? So I'm going to say... Um, I'm going to call it test Paul uh, Nicholson and I'm going to put test Paul 13.33, that's the time, right? Just so I know I've got a different event, right? So I'm going to schedule that event. I'm going to get an email confirming it through Calendly. There's the email. Oh no, that's the Amazon Webs. Here's the email. Invitation. So the invitation worked. That has that has gone through. Calendly have said that has worked. 
So now when I go to my CRM, when I go to my CRM in activities, when I go to activities here, there's this one, uh, call with, I don't know what day, May 12th. Is that what time I put? <laughs> yeah, it was. And call with test Paul, that was my name, test Paul Nicholson on uh, the date time. I probably changed that, right, to a prettier time. Um, 1.45, May 12th, 1.45 to, to 12, uh, 1.45. It says it here anyway, right? I don't know why I'm looking at that. I, I scheduled the event to, to do that. I'll show you what I did. And then the event for Test Paul Nicholson. So when you then click on that, you've got open activities. You've got, uh, if there's any emails, it will log the email eventually. It'll log the email that's been sent via via me to, um, to that email address, but it'll show up in a minute. So when you use this calendly integration it doesn't work it won't it won't tag the person it won't tag so you want if you've had a phone call and you've had more than one phone call you want it to be able to flag that i've had so many activities to that person and you want to click on them and any information you've got on that person you want to know you want it all in one place don't you so <laughs> so what we want to do is we we create the call in calendly it fires via flow, it creates or updates the contact, and then it creates the event. Okay, so how did we do that? So you're gonna log into Zoho Flow, you're gonna uh, come to your homepage in Flow, right? And I'm gonna turn on a new one, I'm gonna add create a flow. So we're gonna put, you know, um, Calendly new, um, Calendly new call right uh, description new customer call Calendly you'll see so you know what you've done it for right can't spell for toffee but I don't think it'll say that's spelled right anyway and create configure an app so we're going to configure an app and it's going to ask us to pull it and you'll see here Calendly is a premium um, app so it would cost you twenty dollars in flow a month to make this work in Zoho one you get flow included so that's why I've got it because I use I pay thirty five dollars a month for Zoho one you get everything included right click on Clark Calendly click next uh, so you've got a choice of scheduled or cancelled so we're going to do scheduled I mean you can go into it deeper if you want it to delete an event but it's going to get deeper if you do stuff like that when someone cancels an event choose connection so i'm going to say pull calendly you're obviously going to do a new connection here type in um you know calendly and you would go to your calendly and get an api how you do that is you go to uh integrations right you go to calendly integrations or you click that link that it's just showed you get api copy that paste it in there it may it may tell me it's already authorized we have successfully created a connection so now it's happily connected so that's the app that's all you've got to do so we've created the trigger so when there's a new event when a scheduled event happens we're going to do something. So what we're first going to do is go over here and go Zoho CRM and we're going to uh, create or update a contact, right? So we, what we want it to look for is the email address of the new contact and then we're going to pull the information that's filled out in the form. So CRM is obviously the connection I, I've, I've connected to everything again you're gonna put you're probably gonna put new connection um, so OCRM authorize and you would have to connect it you base I'm not gonna do it again because I'm already connected but you're gonna put Zoho CRM all triggers and authorize and it'll link through because I've already done it that's why it's a pick list here so Zoho CRM variable name so you can call it you know, update 
new contact calend calendly you don't have to change that but it's up to you just so you can see the flow with the name of it first name so down here you're going to see invitee first name so you're going to click that to add it salutation i don't know if you're going to do i don't you you're only connecting depending on what you've done here is you're only collecting first name last name and email address so that's the only three fields you need to worry about so last name is here invitee last name and then email address invitee email right so done so that now grabs the event finds and creates a contact or it updates a contact depending on um, depending if it's already there or not right so if, if you've spelt their name wrong and it comes that email address gets flagged then it'll it'll change the name to how it should be spelt right so then I'm going to fetch and a, a contact so see here where it says over here is the old CRM still open I'm going to fetch a contact and I'm going to choose connection so OCRM whatever yours is called that's you know variable name fetch contact that's fine I'm just going to leave it like that it's going to pull up all the the information from the contact right so what I want is invite uh, the event ID email. So I want I want the invitee email. I want you to find this contact. So that's the variable. Find me the email of that contact and done. So now that's created the event, updated or found or created or updated the contact, and now we've pulled the contact information. So when I go now to uh, create module entry this is the next one create module entry choose connection your zo crm i'm going to call it create event call something like that right and i'm going to call go to events select the module events leave it as standard unless you have different sorts of events title so this is where i messed about with that date and time i'm going to call it call with invitee first name invitee last name at and i probably put invitee start start time this the pretty the start time pretty might look better so i'm going to put the the uh, at start time you don't need to do that because it's going to show you in the event but if you're going to notify yourself of a new event then you might want to put that location i mean it what depends what you're using it's probably an online phone call right so <clears throat> from time right so it's the invitee start time to the invitee end time right start time end time so it's further up because it's alphabetical order invitee end time the host is obviously you petition what you want to put in the contact id now we're going to go down here to fetch contact so this is where we needed to get that contact information fetch contact contact id right contact id uh, relay calendly description you might want to put in free call for setup or whatever it might be uh, if you want to put in checking times if you want to put in reminders it's up to you but that's all you really need to do so you're going to we're going to put create an event standard events call with First name, last name, at, and then the trigger time. The event starts on the invitee start time and ends on the invitee end time. And done. And then we save it. Saving. And we'd switch it on. I'm just going to jump back to the other one and turn it off just to make sure the new one works. So I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to jump back to the new one. So this is the new one. And I'm going to turn it on. That is now live. So we obviously have to test it and see if I missed anything. Now, if I if I did it right first time, I would be slightly amazed, but So we're going to we're going to 
create another time. We're going to make a call for this date. So uh, Sunday, April 29th. I'll put... Um, I'm going to put, what should I put? Uh, John Smith um, April 1530 test. Right. So John Smith, April has just scheduled an event which will come through my email. Here's the email. John Smith's been invited. April. So Calendly worked in its side. What you can do is go history here. And it says it's completed, right? So if you get any failures, if you get any errors, it would say it here. So it's just said we've triggered, 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 it worked, right? You would get a red you would get a red mark and then it would be an input uh, or an error. You'd get an error here and you could see what you'd done wrong. So when I go back now to my contacts, I should have John Smith at the top. Open activity is here. Call with John Smith, Sunday, April 29th. So you see how that one now looks better. It was because I I edit I changed the trigger for the pretty the pretty date. Oh, just closed it. Hannah. Where is it? So before I add before on that event trigger here on the title see how it says it says trigger event invitee start time pretty before i add invitee start time that's why it looked funky and i couldn't read it could i well i changed it to start start time pretty so now what i've got is call with john smith at 3 30 p.m sunday april 29th 2018 uh free call is the description of the event Here's the time, the start time, the finish time, and it's linking to that contact. So now whenever that person um, changes it, uh, sorry, whenever you schedule calls with that person, they're always going to show up as activities here. So you're going to be able to log all your calls. Whereas, like I said, these guys might be updating this plugin. It would be easier if that plugin worked, but it doesn't tag to customers. It doesn't tag to the contact. It just creates an event. So, a long-winded way of doing it, but once it's set up, you're working. Once you're happy, so again, you create the event in Calendly. We pull the event, we create or update a contact. We then fetch the contact information so that we can create an an event and tag it to that contact. So that's how I've got it working. That's how mine's working. Uh, I am going to start doing uh calls and things on my via my training so that we can talk and go deeper so hopefully that helps i know it was a deep and it might have got quick and we can add videos and ask me questions and we can add things to it to make sure it's makes sense to you um anything that i jumped through or skip past too fast just comment below if you're in the training comment if you're watching this on youtube comment on the youtube video or if you were it, if you are in the uh, Zoho Facebook group, then obviously just comment away, and I'll help you out the best I can. If you've got questions yourself, you can come to the training. You can come to paulnicholson.com and click support, and that will I'm logged in. It'll take you to a different place. Uh, if I go to paulnicholson.com, you can. Go to support and request a ticket, and I'll you know I will put you in my. If you've got a video that you need like this one for Nicole, then I can put it in the queue for things that I need to do to show you how to uh, customize your CRM to to play happily with other apps. So I hope that helps. I know it was kind of crazy and under a mile an hour as usual, but any questions I'm here to help you. I don't want you to get stuck. Just let me know. Cheers.